Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. Today I'm here to talk to you about a sidechain compression in Logic. I have a couple of tricks to show you of my own, some things that I've picked up from uh, being a Logic user, and we're gonna talk about a couple of concepts behind compression. I've put together a little pop tune as an example so that we can apply some of these compression techniques uh, to something that's a little bit fun. Let's take a listen. All right, so first of all, let's talk about compressors in general. I'm gonna jump into my mixer here and let's grab this lead part that I have at the very beginning. Let's solo it out. If we listen to it with the kick drum, I mean, they're not clashing too bad, you know, the things are working, but it would be nice to have it duck a little bit. So that's that's what we're gonna do with the uh, sidechain compression right now. We're gonna create some rhythmic ducking. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new compressor here. I'm just gonna choose Logic's compressor. And let's just talk about compressors in general real quick before we get into the sidechain part. Now, a compressor is basically an amplifier who's level is determined by the incoming signal. So what we have here, if we want to put it even more simply, we're saying, hey, compressor, turn down the loud stuff. And the compressor goes, well, what is loud? And we say, oh, let me set this threshold. And when something goes above this level that I'm setting, then turn it down. And then the compressor says, oh, okay, that sounds great. But by how much? And we go, oh, let me set the ratio here. So I'm going to set, let's say, a four to one ratio well, close to four to one. And a four to one ratio is basically gonna say, hey, reduce all of that material down to a quarter of its loudness. So everything that's above the threshold is gonna get pulled down to 25% of how loud it was. And then the compressor says, oh, okay, cool. So when do you want me to do this? Well, we say, all right, let's use the attack and I'll set an amount of time here so when the sound comes in, when something is loud enough to hit the threshold and trigger the compressor, it's going to take this long for the ratio to be achieved. And then once the sound goes back down below that compressor threshold, it's going to take this long, however long we've set in the release, for the ratio to be pulled off. So you could kind of, so you could kind of think of it as like whack-a-mole, like how long your reaction time is and uh, how hard you hit the thing and how high up the mole needs to come for you to smack it. So... If you think of the compressor in and of itself as maybe like you would a synthesizer, we've got audio signals inside the synthesizer, maybe some waves are coming out of the oscillators, they're going through filters, and then we're hearing them. We've also got some control signals in there. We've got envelopes, we've got MIDI coming in. If you think of a compressor in the same way, we've got both of those signals in here as well. We've got the audio signal coming through, which is whatever channel it happens to be on. In this case, it's this lead sound. And then for the control signal, it is also the lead sound. So. The control signal is the thing that's hitting the threshold, actually turning the compressor on, saying, hey, this is loud now. Do your thing, compressor. And it goes, oh, yeah, sure. Here, give me 71 milliseconds. You got it, dude. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to use this sidechain menu here. And what the sidechain is going to do is actually just let me use an alternate signal as my control so that when a different signal comes in, it, it can hit the threshold but still push down on the channel on which it exists. So, for example, why don't we use a kick drum? The kick drum would be really nice, but I wanna create a little bit of rhythmic pumping. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I have because this particular, uh, this particular sound, 
sorry, this particular rhythm that the kick drum is playing maybe isn't what I want. I want more of a uh, 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 on the off beats. So I've created an instance of ultra beat here. I'm going to unmute it and I'll show you what's going on with this. This is just the initialization, the default patch, and it has this kick drum thing here. I'm going to solo the kick drum and I could play it if I want. It's a simple kick drum sound. Now, if you're not familiar with Ultra Beat, I do have another tutorial on drum synthesis in Ultra Beat that would come in quite handy in this situation. So we've got this mixer section, we've got the synthesis section, which is different for each of the different cells, and then we've got the sequencer down here. Yes, Ultra Beat has a built-in step sequencer. I'm gonna turn it on, and I can either hit play by hitting play right there, or I can make it go by hitting play on the global transport for this logic session. Okay, but Evan, you already have a kick drum. Yes, I know. What I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna leave the sequencer on so that anytime I hit play, this is gonna go. But the way that I'm gonna use it is I'm gonna create what some might refer to as a ghost side chain. So I'll go ahead and click on here and instead of sending it to stereo output, which is the master of the, the, the mix bus, some might say, I'm gonna send it to a bus. Let's go bus five. And one thing that I really like is to sort of have usual bus numbers that I use for certain things. I tend to use bus five for this in general. I have a template that I've set up that uses that. We don't need this aux return. So I'm gonna delete that, delete anyway. Thank you Logic for second guessing me. And now I have UltraBeat just going straight to bus five. So we're not gonna hear it, but it's going. In fact, we're never gonna hear it. All that we're gonna use this signal for is to duck things using sidechain compression. So let me go back over to this lead sound. And now I can open up a compressor. Oh, this one's doing some nice stuff. You can, it's, it's okay to have a second compressor, just don't go crazy. A lot of times I'll have uh, one compressor that's just doing a little bit of, of, of uh, smoothing out and then I'll have my second compressor for like the heavy ducking and stuff like that because uh, they kind of work independently of each other if you do it right. So I'm going to open up this side chain here and I'm going to click on bus 5. There it is. It's not going to be in that menu unless you actually make it exist. So there's bus 5 and that's what's coming from my ultra beat here. So I'm going to solo that too and I'm going to hit play and as I I'm going to pull down the threshold first so that we're really seeing this kick drum come through. The gain reduction here is going to tell us how much the compressor is pushing down. And as I pull this down, th as I pull the threshold down, it's going to be more and more sensitive to the kick drum sound coming out of ultra beat. You can, you can see it pumping over here. Okay, that's good. Now let's pull, push up the ratio. 1.5 is very, very low, doing hardly anything. It's kind of just sitting there a little bit, but we can really make it pump. And this is when the uh, this this is when the uh, the release is really really important. In fact, I'm going to turn the attack down so it just pushes down real quick, and I'm going to use the release to set a proper rhythm to make it really have a lot of momentum. We want that that push. Okay, so now that we've done it there, let's go ahead and let's do it to this bass as well. I'm gonna add another compressor. And what this is gonna do, since in the chorus, if we listen, since in the chorus, the kick is just playing a simple four on the floor, what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna make room for the kick uh, every time it comes down without losing the bass. So we try and mix things in terms of their frequency so that they can coexist nicely, they fit together really well, and I highly encourage you to do that, but this is sort of a way in which we can have our cake and eat it too. And it's really nice because you can also create some great rhythmic effects that'll keep things pumping and exciting. So I'm gonna go to bus five here. Let's solo this guy. 
First we'll adjust the threshold. And I don't think you should ever mix using, I don't think you should ever judge your mix based on some sort of meter or, or anything like that. Use your ears, except to see if you're clipping or not. That's very important. But using like a, like a spectrum viewer, and the gain reduction is no indication of how well you've set your compressor, but it is nice because you can see if you're catching the right rhythm, which is great. So now let's push up the ratio. It delayed the release just a little bit to really make it kind of lag a little bit. Let's see how it sounds with the kick. There we go. It's all a big juggling act. You want to get the most musical parts of this thing, but you want to have it pumping and shaking in the right way. So just massaging the compressor threshold and the ratio will, will get you to where you want to go. Here's without. It just kind of sits there, stagnant. Now we can turn it up a little louder if we want. Because we have room for it. It's not just overtaking everything, it's adding to the rhythm. The last thing I want to do is I want to add this same effect to the noise. So this noise, if you listen here, it's a nice noise build and we have the same thing over here. Whoops. Filter sweep on the noise with a little bit of stereo delay here and there. And I've, uh, I've high-passed it, if you want to take a look. So that's handy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing using the compressor. And this is where the Ultra Beat really comes in handy, using this Ghost sidechain, because there is no kick drum in this section here, but we can still have it pumping like this and creating this really nice energy. So let's go bus 5. Oh, we got to solo the Ultra Beat as well. You can already hear it. Well, let's see how that sounds with everything else. Maybe the release is just slightly too long. You just want to adjust it to make sure that that rhythm works. Maybe it's a little too much. There we go. It's just slightly, the, the threshold was just a little too low. It wasn't quite letting enough through. That's cool. And so we have it at the end as well. And if you don't want to have that pumping at the end part, let's say you want the pumping here but not there, I'm going to open up my automation and I'm going to go to the compressor and all I'm going to do is automate the ratio. Okay, so the ratio is set there. I'm going to use my marquee tool, just select this area and yank it on down. Okay, so now the ratio is at 1.0 and it's not going to make any change. Or we could even delete this breakpoint here and have it sort of fade in. We'll use the automation curve tool. And ba ba boom. This thing's gonna sound great. Just remember, with a ratio of one or all the way down, the compressor's not gonna do anything. So let's take a listen to the finished product.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is Evan Sutton. I'm an instructor of electronic music production and sound design, and I co-designed and developed the sound design synthesis program for Native Instruments Complete 7. You can catch me at astrolith.net. Here's some of my music. Keep your eyes peeled on the DubSpot blog for more tutorials from me and my fabulous colleagues. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.